So I had this crazy idea where I wanted to see if I could 3D print a full helmet in less than 24 hours, and yeah, I'm probably gonna cheat on this challenge as well. I saw this post from Yosh Studios over on their Patreon showing off a King Thanos crown. This basically takes that old, boring Thanos helmet that I was honestly never a big fan of to begin with and mash it up with the crown pieces from Sauron's helmet from Lord of the Rings. And to print these fast, I'm gonna be using the fastest 3D printer that I own, which is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and this is where I'm cheating. I own two of these now, but the problem is that helmet doesn't fit on the build volume of this 3D printer, so I need to, one, scale it down to fit my head. I scaled it down to 82% scale, and it was still too large to print on the build volume volume of this machine. So I took it into mesh mixer and cut it up into a few extra pieces where it would then more reliably fit on the build volume of this printer and started firing off prints in some gold silk PLA. Now I have two of these printers set up at home, one with the AMS system so I can print in multi-materials, which I'm not using at this point for this project, but I'm able to fire up multiple parts at one time. And thankfully I had that because I ended up running into a handful of print failures while trying to get this to work properly, which just basically required me to relook at the parts and how they were oriented as well as how they were actually supported. I went with some very minimal supports initially there on those crown pieces and had to go back and add some more supports to them. Now, unfortunately, it failed not once, but also twice overnight where it ended up just stopped extruding filament for whatever reason, but kept printing. And at this point I was out of gold silk PLA. So I swapped over to this purplish color silk PLA that you're seeing here, and it ended up printing beautifully on the X1 Carbon. Now, one trick I found out about thanks to the Bamboo Lab Facebook group is that if you're working with silk filament, you need to slow down the outer and inner wall speeds ever so slightly if you want it to be really nice and shiny. So for all of these prints, I reduced the outer wall speed to 150 millimeters per second and the inner wall speed to 225 millimeters per second. And the prints are still printing extremely fast and the results are looking really nice and clean. And after nine hours and 50 minutes, the main portion of the helmet finished printing and looks pretty dang smooth at 0.2 millimeter layer height. This printed so, so fast. I only put supports around the perimeter. Unfortunately, I did have two small defects where I think I just might've missed putting some, uh, some paint on supports on the little corners there of the helmet. But thankfully I went off and reprinted those pieces and I think it only took like 10 minutes to print those. And I did end up with a bunch of different prints to work with here. Some of these obviously have failed, so I'm not gonna be able to work with those. A, a good bit of these were the failed prints and support pieces, but some of the other prints actually did print properly and we are gonna be able to work with all of these, jeez. Also, even though this is a failed print, look at these crazy tiled in support settings. This just comes right off and the prints look so clean were the supports connected to them. So normally I would use something like 3D Gloop to attach the lower crown pieces here. Let me not install these backward here, but I, I, I'm all out of 3D Gloop at the moment. So I, I have to reorder some. So what I'm just gonna use is a little bit of super glue and then probably look into welding the back of the pieces. And because the prints were printed flat on this extremely smooth PEX plate from Wham Bam for the X1 Carbon, it's a little too glossy and smooth for the glue to realistically stick. So I'm gonna be taking a little bit of sandpaper and roughing it up just to give it a little bit of texture to grip onto. Now for the spots here on the helmet that were defective that I've gone off and reprinted the small bits for, I'm just gonna use a Dremel and try and just sand this down as closely as I can get to it. I also went outside and used this uh, old wood burner that I have here to actually go along the seams that I super glued there so that everything is now plastic welded together. Make sure you do that outside, wear respirator when doing it. You definitely don't wanna be breathing in these melted plastic fumes. And obviously we need to try this thing on now. This fits perfectly. I'm so happy with how this scaled and uh, and came together here. Now we just need to get the actual horns or, or, or the, the pieces of the crown uh, assembled. So I also had uh, just the one tall, there's one really tall centerpiece that I printed in the gold silk PLA. And then the rest I ended up reprinting in that purple silk PLA 
but I didn't like that color combo. So I went back and reprinted the one centerpiece again, nice and big there. So let's get these inserted and see how this, oh no, I can already see what the issue is going to be. So these crown pieces, it's, the design is great. It actually slides in and inserts into place. However, it slides in so far back that if I try to wear this, it's definitely going to pop out when I put these. Yeah, it's, it's, I can't fit the helmet on with them in, so I'm gonna have to shave these down. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just using my Dremel to Dremel down the inside pegs there. But what I'm doing is inserting them using a Sharpie here and going along and basically tracing the edges around so that I know how much I need to trim away. And I ended up using a hot glue gun to secure all of the crown pieces to the helmet. And here's the completed printed and assembled King Thanos helmet by Yosh Studios. And what's crazy is that the total print time for this helmet is just under 18 hours that I was able to print on my two X1 carbons. And what's even crazier is I would have been able to print all of these parts for this helmet on one of these X1 carbons in just those 18 hours. And of course, we've got to put it on. This is so cool. This is one of the most fun I've had 3D printing a helmet in a while. I just love the design. It's so simple, but it really helps accentuate and make this a much more cool looking Thanos helmet than just your traditional Thanos helmet. Plus, I have the added benefit that I noticed that when I trimmed off these side pieces for the helmet to fit on the build plate, that if you put them together, it kind of looks like a chest piece or a little armor piece that you could wear in your chest. So I went off and reprinted these at 90% scale so they were slightly larger and then just welded them together. And again, yeah, it looks really cool as a potential armor piece or display piece to go along with the helmet. Now, is this print perfect? No, I definitely have some ribbing and layer line issues that I need to look into on the print itself. I'm not sure if that just has to do with the overall entire piece being fully supported and printing and just kind of vibrating or if there's something that I need to look into in terms of uh, lubing up some of the rods or what have you, but there's definitely more sanding that I'm gonna have to do on this if I wanna decide to actually finish this. And I'm happy that I went ahead and I only used hot glue for the crown pieces here so that I can more easily remove those if I'd like to again, go back in and paint these. And I actually really like the color combination of this silk gold with the silk purple. Also a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me just making random videos like this one here. If you're interested in more information about my 3D printer settings, you can find that over in my Patreon. But yeah, there was really no point to this other than I wanted to print this helmet and I figured I'd record it, share it with you guys and see if I could actually print all the parts here within 24 hours, 12 hours maybe total that I was printing between the two printers. The total time was closer to 18 hours, but pretty dang happy with the quality of this print and how it turned out. I'll definitely be doing some more videos here with the X1 Carbon, especially the AMS unit that I have back at the house. I'll be doing a follow-up video here with like a two month plus review after using it. I still have a bunch of random little issues with this machine, but it's continuously improving and the print speed and quality continues to amaze me. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. I'll see you next time. Bye now.